All right, so we've had a lot of uh, time between the Eastern and Western Conference Finals to get to the finals uh, with the gentleman sweep and the sweep on the east side. Um, And we're going to get into – we're going to zero in on this game in a minute after a few games. But with all the time off, do you think everybody's bound to overreact to tonight's game? Oh, no question about it. I mean, there's – because it's been so long since we had a basketball game, to date – Tonight's game is going to feel disproportionately important. And I truly, I know this sounds ridiculous, but I truly see a scenario where the Mavs lose tonight and then win the next four. I'm not saying that is the smartest prediction, but I I think that we got used to the Mavs winning game ones the last couple rounds. But the fact of the matter is, Luka, in his career, here's how game ones have gone for the Mavs. They lost game one, his first playoff series against the Clippers. They then won game one uh, the next year against the Clippers. Then, en route to the Western Conference Finals, they lost game one to to Utah. They lost game one to Phoenix. They lost game one to Golden State. This year, they lost game one to the Clippers. They lost game one to OKC. And then, so it's not the last couple rounds. And then, obviously, they dominated the Western Conference Finals and they won that. So, there has always been with Luka an element of the LeBron feel-out game to game one. Which is, obviously, you're trying to win, but you are diagnosing, seeing what's going on. Yeah, exactly right. And you feel like it's a long series, and I don't have... Now, another factor of that is this is, and this is remarkable, Lucas played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is Luca's ninth career playoff series. Eight of those nine times... He has not had home court. They have been the road team. The one time he had home court advantage in a series, he missed the first two home games. It's when he was injured against Utah a couple years ago. So the other thing that happens in these games is it's also less critical for the Mavs in Luka's career to win game one because they are the road team. You know, you the I know it's cliche, yeah. but it's true. You take care of your home games, it, it, the and then try to steal one on the road. So I just I, so I think there will be overreaction. Here are the things, and I hope I'm not stepping on, uh, the rest of the show. But here are the things I am watching tonight. Who is the primary defender on Kyrie Irving? I personally think it should be Drew Holiday if I were the Celtics. And that's for two reasons. Now, you could say we can have Derek White do it, right? Because Derek White's a good defender. If you have Derek White do it and you do a Luka Kyrie pick and roll and Derek White ends up on Luka, you're in trouble if you're Boston. You're in a lot of trouble if you're Boston. Now, I don't think that Drew. I don't hate that matchup can do that much, great- but like he could. Luca, Luca, and Derek White. Luca, no, Derek White, yeah. Oh, I just is think Derek, Luca's too big. I, I, I just think Luca right. would just back him down. Drew is a and little you know bit I mean? more stout. Then, that's fair. Drew yeah. is way more, and Drew's way more stout. And I think Drew is a good enough defender that he can really, I don't want to say eliminate, but really hamper Kyrie, really hamper him. And so, and nope. you don't really need Drew's offense. So I want to see what that matchup is. And then I want to see in the front court. Okay, so this is a little X's and O's. uh, And I will leave this typically to Zach Lowe, yeah, of Zach Lowe's and Kevin O'Connor's of the world, but it's the finals, so we can do it for a moment. I I think that the Celtics are going to put Chris Stapps on whomever they believe to be the Mavs' least dangerous offensive player. 
So probably Derek Jones Jr. That way, if Luka is trying to get Chris Stapps involved in the action on a pick and roll, then his pick and roll partner, instead of being lively, right, or instead of being PJ Washington, is Derek Jones Jr., who is probably the guy you least want to be operating offensively. So I think that's an interesting one to watch. I'm also curious, who do you think DeMonte is going to be guarding Luka? Jason Tate, and again, there's going to be switches. There's going to be, I understand all of that. But his primary assignment, primary. Do you think, who do you think it's going to be? Um, I got a funny feeling it will be Jalen Brown. It will probably be Jalen so Brown. I think it will be too. So I, I, the question is, will it be Tatum or Brown, really? And right. who do you, who do you not mind their offense getting sapped from to a degree? Yeah, from uh, guarding because Luka guarding Luca like is going to take away from your ability on offense. It just is. Now Jalen Brown, I think, is a touch better defensive player than Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum is very good defensive player, but I think Jalen Brown's better. But Tatum is so much taller that I wonder if Tatum wouldn't have more success. But now all of a sudden, this is where it really does. There is some, I don't want to say ego management, because that's because Tatum has been such a great teammate and Tatum has conducted himself so well. But there is, this is, I thought that the whole, oh, did Tatum celebrate Jalen's Eastern Conference Finals MVP enough was ridiculous. I thought the idea that there is some battle between Tatum and Brown, I haven't seen that. The only thing I've seen over the years is maybe Jalen Brown being understandably Irritated annoyed. about the trades? That, <laughs> yes, that every offseason he's included in trade rumors and zero offseasons Tatum is. You know what I mean? So I think there is, there, but I don't think between those two guys there's any issue. With all that said, if you're Jason Tatum and you're tasked with guarding Luka and all of a sudden that leads to your offensive numbers being depressed and then Jalen Brown won conference finals MVP. Jalen Brown is having the best offensive series it, you know, in the finals, that could be a tricky spot. And so I'm really intrigued by that. I'm also really intrigued by how I am not worried about Luka in his first finals at all. This guy was playing in EuroLeague tournaments with guys setting flares off in the crowd when he was a teenager. He's not going to be intimidated. Kyrie is not going to be intimidated. Everyone else on the Mavs, these are the biggest games of their entire lives by a wide margin. Wide margin. The Celtics, meanwhile, every single one of those guys, except for Chris Stapps, was playing in these games two years ago. And so, how does, and I guess for Drew it was three years ago, but still, they've all been there. How does that impact it? And then the last thing is, Porzingis, which, you know, we'll get to in a bit, but uh all right, let's get to uh the next question, Demonte. Yeah, so we just talked about game one. Um, but what is your over yeah. what's your finals prediction? What do you think will be, will be the the narrative of this series? Oh, I think the narrative of this series is gonna be Luka Doncic is one of the greatest offensive players in the history of the league. I do. I think Luka is going to full-blown control every possession that he wants to. It is going to be not that dissimilar from LeBron 2015 against the Warriors where the ball is just always in his hands and he is making every decision with the distinction being this Celtics team is is not quite as good as that 2015 Warriors team, and Kyrie Irving, God willing, isn't going to break his kneecap in game one. And that when Luka needs to take possessions off, Kyrie can go cook. But I think that you are going to see Luka 
dissecting a great defense as he has throughout his entire playoff career. So that is the other aspect of this that I think is noteworthy on a Luka history standpoint. Luka has only played against great defenses in his postseason career. In his first ever playoffs, and this is, I think, an underrated fact about him, first ever playoffs, he's playing a fully healthy Clippers team that that season was the number five defense in the NBA. His second ever playoffs, he's playing against a fully healthy Clippers team that was number eight in the NBA, and Chris Dapps got hurt in it. His third playoff season, in round one, he's playing against a Utah team that has the now four-time defensive player of the year, who was the number nine defense in basketball, then a Phoenix team that that year was the number three defense in basketball, then a Warriors team that that year was a number the number two defense in basketball. This year, in the postseason, he has gone, and I'm doing the per 100, I'm doing true defensive numbers. In the first round, for the first time in his career, he got a break defensively because the Clippers were below average at number 18. Then in round two, they played the Thunder, who were the number four defense. In round three, they played the Timberwolves, who were the number one defense. So Luka has gone up against, in his postseason career, and now they're playing Boston, who's the number three defense. In nine series, he's gone up against eight top ten defenses and five top five defenses. And he has put up historic postseason numbers. And so, I listen, I, I listen to, uh, you know, legend of the podcast game, Bill Simmons, try to talk himself into the idea that we should just throw away what the Mavs did against the Timberwolves for reasons that never really got explained. Everyone needs to remember the way the Timberwolves were being discussed and the way that defense was being discussed from a historic standpoint during and after the Nuggets series. And Luka eviscerated them. Absolutely eviscerated them. And now he gets a chance to do it against Boston. And the Thunder and Boston had a lot of similarities this year. This year on defense, Boston 3, Oklahoma City 4. On offense, Boston 1, Oklahoma City 3. Um, on three-point percentage this season, Oklahoma City 1, Boston 2. Very similar teams. And Kyrie in that series averaged 16 points per game. And the Mavs won in 6. And that included giving game four away. So I I I understand what the Vegas odds are, but for me not to take the best player in a series, it needs to be a very lopsided situation. That is not this. It appears to be this because Boston had 64 wins and Dallas had 50. But once Dallas got these players at the trade deadline and started running with this starting five. They have the top defense in basketball. They, they have a record of a 65-win team. So I think the matchup's dead even. And if it's dead even and one player has a, a guy who's going to go down as one of the greatest offensive players in the history of the sport, and he is seemingly getting healthier and peaking, I'm going to go with them. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or just click the link in the description below.